Hey everybody, Jekyll is painting here with a new video and today we're going to go over some ins and outs of speed painting. I've got this brand new Adeptus Sororitas Canon S model, beautiful miniature, really excited to get some paint on it and a really nice Elric's Hobbies base, a little rock on there. And I'm going to show you guys how to do some speed painting stuff and how to prepare yourself for success. And that first thing is going to be to pick out a primer that complements your color scheme. So in this case, I got red brown from Steinal Res. You've seen me use it before. And that is because the main color on the model is going to be a nice cream ivory cloth for her robes. And I've got three colors picked out right here. Olive flesh, eye for an ivory, and bold titanium white. And then the armor is going to be a nice black color. But to speed things up, we're going to be using some metallics. So I have some coal black some dark silver, and some thrash metal. For the accent colors, I have some bronze, some rich gold, and some dark golden brown for the leathers. And for our base, we've got some dark gray blue, dark warm gray, and light neutral gray. This is to create a nice neutral blue gray tile. So first things first, we're gonna prime everything up, get a nice solid coat of our red brown primer. This is just gonna help set up our other colors. And it's a nice, uh, it's a nice primer. Um, I like it for a lot of different reasons. Works pretty good in this instance. Now, if we were doing some different colors, like maybe blue was our main color for the robes, I'd probably go with a black primer. Or if we wanted to go with a lighter color scheme, like maybe a cream color or a yellow for the armor as well, I might go for a more neutral colored primer rather than the brown. But because we're going for the robes in this cream color, setting it up with that red brown. The first color is gonna be olive flesh. I'm gonna do a very quick highlight over top of that brown with the olive flesh using our airbrush here, kind of maintaining a high spray angle from the get-go so that some of that brown can show through. This is gonna help create a really dynamic cream color for those robes really, really quickly. Um, not going for anything crazy. I'm not focusing any one areas other than maybe like the tops of the shoulders and the very edge of the robe down at the bottom. Uh, pretty simple airbrush scheme because we're going for speed. After that olive flesh, I'm going to highlight up with our Eifer and Ivory. Just some little pop highlights here and there. Again, nothing crazy. I'm not spending too much time on it. Just a high spray angle around some of the bold areas. And then we're going to finish that out with some bold titanium white. I have this really thinned out with flow improver, so it's nice and smooth. And I'm just going to hit a few areas on the brightest points. Again, like top of the shoulders, maybe the edges. Uh, she's got like a knee sticking up, uh, moving that cloth a little bit. So I might hit the top of that knee. Again, not super crazy. We are not wasting time on this. We're just trying to create a nice top-down highlight, like a zenithal highlight on there. After that, we're gonna move into our other airbrushing stuff, which is gonna be on our base. And I'm gonna start off with the dark gray blue. And the reason for this is we're trying to be as efficient as possible when we're working. So I'm not gonna clean out the airbrush, turn off the compressor, and then start base coating other colors on the miniature. I wanna get all of our airbrush stuff done in a row. That way our time is utilized more efficiently. So if you have a whole squad or whole army of these ladies, we're gonna do the airbrushing on the cloth and then we're gonna do the airbrushing on the base. So that way we're utilizing our airbrush time wisely and then we'll get into brush painting. I just did some dark warm gray as a second color, just kind of gray out that blue a little bit more. And then I did a 50-50 mix of the dark warm gray and the light neutral gray to do a little highlight color on our tile. So we have a nice kind of slate blue gray tile going on, just making sure not to spray any on that brown dirt area. And then I'm gonna take our dark silver and our coal black. I'm gonna mix those two together. I recommend starting with a 50-50 mix, and if you want it to be darker, add a drop at a time of black paint because when mixing with black paint, it's really easy to overdo it, and then you just have a lot of black paint. And we do want a just very, very dark black metallic. So I think this was um, like three drops 
of metallic to like four drops of black paint. And even then it ended up being a little bit more of a steel color than I really wanted after I blocked everything in and let it dry. But I have a fix for that. Really, really simple fix. And we'll go over that when I'm done painting this section. But super, super easy. Just find out all the stuff that you want to be the armor color. Block that in. Main reason I'm using metallics is because we can create a nice metallic effect by mixing uh, steel colors with matte paint to get a color tinted or like a painted metal with a like a clear coat. I don't want it to be too shiny because then it becomes a candy coat. I just want this to be a colored metal. And metallics usually paint a little bit faster and cover a little bit better than some matte paints. So I can have this much thinner, which means I can work a lot faster with less paint in my brush and it's gonna cover really quickly because it has such good flow when it's that thin. And it just speeds up the process. Uh, it's just something that I noticed and picked up through my years of painting is that a lot of times if you have a really nice dark metallic paint or a good metallic paint, um, from say Pro Acryl or Vallejo or Scale 75, they just paint a little bit faster than matte colors. And here's the fix, because that steel paint was not dark enough, all I did was take our coal black and just thin it out into kind of a wash. And I just very lightly washed that thinned out black paint over our steel color. And it darkened it down perfectly right to where I wanted it, a nice dark black steel color. After that, I'm gonna grab thrash metal and we're gonna cut in all the stuff for our weapons. So our sword blade and the uh, inferno pistol. I forget what the sisters call their melted pistols or it might just be a melted pistol, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna block in the body on that melted pistol and the handle. I know that sometimes the uh, guns are painted a certain color, like maybe an olive drab or a dark red or a black even. But in this case, we're going for some shiny, pristine weapons. Maybe they're like nickel plated or something um, and just do that. And then I'm also going to hit the grenades. Looks a little shiny as is, but after a wash, uh, this neutral thrash metal darkens down enough to be a really nice mid steel color. Then we're going to block in all of our little accent stuff with some bronze. So the barrel of that melta pistol, getting that iconic melta look. And then all the stuff that's gonna be gold, I'm gonna base coat in this bronze. And the reason for that is it gives us a darker base to work up off of, and it also covers a little bit better than most gold paints. So I have it really thin so I can work really fast. And then when that's dry, I can come back with our gold color and do some little highlights on top of those areas that we wanna look gold. So that way we'll have a nice rich gold color, but we're painting a lot faster than we would if we just wanted to base coat with a gold. And here it is, rich gold. That's gonna be our gold color. Nice yellow, shiny gold. As you can see, I'm just gonna go back onto the areas that I want to be gold, like this big Inquisition symbol, little Inquisition symbol from her Rosarius and like the hilt of the blade. She's got this really cool wreath engraved onto her helmet or embossed onto her helmet, whatever you wanna say. Uh, so we're just gonna highlight those areas up with some rich gold, pop those details out a little bit get it set up for a wash super easy, super fast, not wasting time on creating realistic metal effects or anything. Not only are we going for very fast, but these models are really small. This is like half of the proportion of a space Marine. So I'm not going to be wasting time trying to do true metallic metals on something this tiny because you won't be able to see it.
After our metallics are done, I'm gonna do the leather work. This is the dark golden brown. So she's got these big gloves and um, if you want to, I've seen where the uh, curious is covered in leather. Um, I was just looking at the box art for the Canoness and it looks like both of these chest armor pieces are a metallic or painted in a, a paint color. So I'm just gonna leave that as a dark steel color and just do like the gloves and a little ammo pouch and the uh, book hanging from her belt. And I'm also gonna base coat the Rosarius beads in this dark brown and I'll just help the ivory color that we're going to use cover a little bit better in the long run because we have some of that black steel paint on the Rosarius beads. So it'll save us time to do a quick little base coat now rather than trying to do two or three coats with the ivory color later to cover those dark colors from our previous steps. And the last one is gonna be back to the olive flesh and that's the color we're gonna use for our Rosarius beads and also the pages in the book. And she has this little bracelet, uh, like a lanyard on her glove. And I'm just gonna do that in olive flesh as well just to have it be sort of the same color um, one thing that really helps when speed painting stuff is to limit your color palette and you can always go back and add more paint later or paint over things uh, to get more colors in your color scheme but when you're trying to speed paint through an army and have it look really good with a clean execution limiting your color palette is something that can really help with all those colors blocked in, we're gonna move into our washes. I got some exhaust wash from AK Interactive and their odorless thinner. And we're just going to dilute some of that and just slap it all over. So another thing that really helps when speed painting stuff is to also limit the number of washes you're going to use and also pick a wash that will dry really fast. You know, we're including dry times in our speed painting because it is time that you are taking out of your day to paint stuff and get it done so the longer you're waiting for stuff to dry the less you're getting done it's very inefficient that's why i really like enamel washes for speed painting stuff and getting armies out the door really really quickly because we just use the wash and the thinner and kind of clean it up and it dries super fast dries way faster than a wash from uh, companies like Citadel and Army Painter that are water-based or have like a retarding medium in them so that you can have a longer working time. Whereas this stuff is super easy to work with and if you make any mistakes or you need to clean up anything, you just get more of your thinner and it cleans it right up off the model. Also, this is not a water-based product so it will not reactivate any of the acrylic paint that we just put down which makes it really safe to use. So you can work exceptionally fast, have a really laser accurate wash all over the model, and it dries very quickly. So it helps out when you're trying to get a whole bunch of models out the door. You know, you just wanna put a light wash on there to pop out the details and have it dry really quickly so you can get back to work. It's the perfect product. And I'm using the exhaust wash here, one, because it's kind of a brownish sepia tone that complements everything. It may not be as dark on the steel colors, but that's okay because we have a step after this one that's gonna fix that up. So it's sort of a do-it-all wash. I like the lighter brown washes for kind of a do everything in one step wash. All right, so if you want some more definition on your other parts of the model, like our guns and swords and golds, things like that, all I'm doing right now is the exact same thing that I did with the armor. I've just taken some of our coal black, thinned it out really thin to a wash, like a watery wash consistency. And I'm just gonna put that on our metallics so that we have some bold shading in the details. Making sure that on places like the blade, I'm gonna clean off any little droplets that get on the face of the blade so that it's nice and clean, but the fuller and the engraved detail is getting shaded and popped out. Now, what you're seeing right now is me being a little impatient. What I should have done is waited for the enamel wash to fully dry because water and that odorless thinner do not mix. So our water thinned out paint beads up and doesn't get in there. But 
I just waited for that to dry and then I went back and fixed it, no big deal. And also because the exhaust wash is a little glossy, um, I'm gonna hit this with a matte varnish to not only seal in everything that we've done and protect our paint, but also to uniform the finish on our model so that it's not all shiny. Because it just looks like it's covered in oil. Um, it's, that's the kind of finish that it has. And you can't really paint on top of it with more acrylic paints. Like that'll, they'll beat up almost like a nonstick skillet. So putting that matte varnish on there really helps. After that, we're just gonna do a quick dry brush on our base, do our light neutral gray to pop out the rock and tiles, kind of get it a little dusty looking, a little worn out, pop out those details. Super, super easy and very fast. Looks great. And then I'm gonna take that same gray and our dark golden brown, mix those together 50-50 and do a quick dry brush on our little dirt section. And then also kind of dry brush up on top of our tiles to kind of dirty those up a little bit, make that base look really realistic. And that's it. Um, afterwards, I just painted the rim like I always do, pinned her to the base, and she's ready to hit the table. Um, when you're done with all this, it's not technically a finished model. I'll be the first one to tell you that, right? There's lots of other steps that we could do, but this is a fully painted model that has all of the requirements to be put on the table and look really good. So if you have an entire army that looks like this, that's a really good looking army in the grand scheme of things. And then over time, you can go back and do all of your little details and stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you next time.